Hey guys! <laughs> I hope I didn't scare you with that super loud Hey guys! But today I'm just in a really good mood And today I'm gonna show you guys how to edit this picture I posted these images not that long ago on my Instagram And I also have a behind the scenes video So if you haven't seen it, check it out The link will be in the description and probably floating somewhere on the screen and as usual, I'm gonna just start with opening it in my Photoshop. I shot it in RAW, so it's opening in Camera RAW. If you guys shot this in JPEG, don't worry, you can still open it in Camera RAW. You will just have to go to File, Open As. Oh, so really, let me just choose whatever picture I have here. Let's just choose this one. It's in JPEG, and you would just have to choose instead of Photoshop, Camera RAW then press open and it's gonna open it in camera raw but this is not the picture we're gonna be editing today this is the one okay so camera raw is very similar to Lightroom if you don't have Lightroom this is perfect alright so I'm gonna play with some white balance right now and I'm just gonna make it a little bit cooler just like so I think that's good enough now I'm gonna play with some shadow contrast and exposure a little bit so we're gonna make it just a touch brighter more contrasting and we're gonna bring the shadows up quite a bit and maybe add a little bit more contrast and actually I'm gonna lower the highlights just a little bit it's not gonna look very pretty on the face right now but we're gonna fix it after and I'm gonna also sharpen it up a little bit and reduce the noise this also helps with skin just like so also I'm gonna go ahead and just make the greens a little bit more saturated make the purples more saturated and the blues just like that and also I'm gonna show you guys something very cool that I discovered recently and it's lens correction it's really cool so because I shoot at 85 millimeters sometimes it creates a lens distortion which it tends to kind of make the picture look a little bit wider than it when than it actually is so I'm gonna go into manual here and right here on the distortion I'm just gonna pull it this way so it distorts a picture just a little bit kind of pulling it inwards and I'm just gonna go ahead and open the image so now before I start the editing I'm gonna play with the sizing of the image I'm gonna just kind of make my own crop and I'm just gonna pull the sides here just kind of to where I like it I think this is good and now I'm just gonna stretch the edges to fit in the picture I'm just gonna take this rectangular tool I'm gonna select this section right here make sure you don't select the person because then it's gonna stretch her out which we don't want right click free transform right click again and then distort and you're gonna just grab this little square right here and pull it to the side just like so and we're gonna apply our distortion deselect and we're gonna select the same amount on the other side now here I like to take a little bit of the hair as well because it's gonna distort it a little bit and make it bigger which I like uh, same thing right click free transform right click distort and pull it to the side just like so now we still have some spots over here on the side if you guys can see in gray and we're just gonna distort that as well but we're gonna use liquify this time so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my layer right click duplicate layer OK filter liquify and I'm just gonna take my brush make it just a little bit bigger and I'm just gonna pull the sides slightly here to just take that gray away I'm gonna do the same here at the top just make sure you don't pull the model and don't distort her okay so the dress was pretty big on her so I'm just gonna kind of pull it in here where it was kind of making the weird shapes 
and then I'm also gonna pull her hair. I want the hair to look big. I love big hair. I think it just makes everything look so much more magical. So with a fairly big brush I'm just kind of pulling the hair kind of shaping it the way I want. I can even make it a little bit longer right here. I think that looks good. Okay, and we can just kind of see what we changed here. I think it looks great, so I'm just gonna go ahead and merge my layers, and yes, I do merge my layers a lot. I just like to do that. So now something that is bugging me is that she is not centered in the shot, so I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna move the crop just a little bit to the side. And again, I'm just gonna do the same distortion thing here on the side just to fix the edges. I can easily do this manipulation because I shoot at a very low aperture and the background is usually really blurred, so I can easily just kind of distort the edges the way I want. That's why I love shooting really low on the aperture. Okay, so now that we have everything ready, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the skin. She has really beautiful skin, but what we're mostly gonna be fixing is the shadows. I'm gonna start with just my patch tool to take away some of the little imperfections. And I'm gonna speed up this process. I showed you guys a million times how to do it. You just literally circle the little imperfection and drag it to the spot where the skin is clear and before you do that don't forget to duplicate your layer so if you messed up you can always go back to the original image So now that I'm done with the patch tool, I'm going to merge my layers. Hopefully I didn't trigger anyone by merging my layers. I know you guys really hate doing it and it's just, I think it's really funny. But anyways, I'm going to make another duplicate layer because now I'm going to be fixing the shadows. And I do this a lot and I don't mind compromising the skin texture too much because again, I shoot at such a low aperture that the skin already looks pretty nice and blurry and that's what I actually do do really like. So I'm going to take my uh, pipette, the sampling tool here. I'm going to sample the skin color that I like and now with the brush and soft rounded brush, I'm going to go ahead and paint it on. I'm using a tablet so I don't have to lower my opacity but if you are using a mouse please lower your opacity to like I don't know like 15 or 20 percent about that but again because I'm using a tablet it kind of adjusts to the pressure that I'm putting on the tablet a lot of you guys ask what kind of tablet I'm using and I'm using Wacom into a pen and touch it's very cheap and great I think I bought it for around hundred dollars and yeah it works perfectly so I'm just gonna lightly go ahead and start painting painting um, it on in the spots that I want to. And I usually like to just lighten up the forehead. If I make a mistake I just go ahead with an eraser tool and erase it. Uh, but yeah I lighten up the forehead, I like to lighten up the skin under the eyes like that so I sample the lightest skin around the eyes and then I just go ahead and apply it kind of underneath. Again, I like to use the soft rounded brush for that. Same goes for the chin. Just whenever you want to bring something forward, you would just apply a lighter color. And I like sampling the skin around because it creates the best results. Okay, 
be careful with it. If you put too much, it might look very unnatural. But I really like using this technique because it kind of smooths out the skin really nicely. Alright, so after that's done, I'm just going to lower the opacity here because I don't want it too harsh. I'm just going to look where it looks the best. You can also back it up to see if it doesn't look too fake. Maybe I can actually higher it just, just a tad. Okay, I think that looks pretty good, so I'm just going to go ahead and merge those layers. Okay, so I think the skin looks great. There's just one last thing that I want to fix. So I'm just going to duplicate the layer as usual. And I'm going to use my patch tool here again. I'm just going to select this fold right here. And I'm just going to erase it by just dragging it to the side. This is why I love the patch tool because it's so easy to use. And now I'm just going to lower the opacity down a little bit, just so we can see that fold still just a little bit, but not too much. You don't want to make it too fake looking. Okay, I think that is perfect. So now that we have our base done, we're going to go ahead and start with gradient maps. So you just right click on the gradient and as you can see I have lots of gradient created here. I love using gradient maps. I just recently started doing it and it's absolutely amazing. You can play around with these for hours. It's really addicting. We're going to be using this one and I think this one today. I also have this one which is pretty cool but yeah we're gonna stick with just the uh, two-tone gradient maps and if you don't know how to make them it's very very simple all you have to do is right click on this little button right here the little square choose whatever color you like and then just press ok same goes for this side I like to keep darker colors to the left and then lighter colors to the right so I'm just gonna press ok and apply the gradient map and then in your layers here right here instead of normal we're gonna choose multiply and now it looks a little bit crazy right now so we're just gonna lower our opacity down to about here and I really love what it did to the background I don't really like what it did to the skin but that's very easy to fix we're just gonna pick our uh, eraser tool and get the opacity lower maybe maybe to like 70 and then we're gonna just go ahead and start erasing the skin Maybe I'm going to erase it off her hair a little bit as well. And whenever you see it being too purple, like right here on her fingers, I'm going to bring the opacity to 100 and erase it off her fingers a little bit more. Just like so. This is before and after. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of gradient maps. And this time, actually, I think I'm going to add, hmm, I think I'm going to add this one right here. It's really blue. I'm going to press OK and again press Multiply. I'm not going to add it too much, just a tiny bit, like 9%. And same thing, I'm going to just go ahead and erase her skin so that it's not as cold. You don't want to make the skin look blue. That's not cool. So let's just see what these gradient maps did. So this is before and after the gradient maps. As you can tell, we made it a lot more purple and blue. We just changed the tonality of the picture. 
and I love it. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just merge those. And now we're going to go ahead and play with some selective color. So on the reds, I'm going to make them a little bit more yellow. This will mostly affect the skin. The reds and the yellows will affect the skin. And on the yellow, we're going to make it more yellow and maybe a little bit darker, just like so. On the greens, we're going to make them a little bit more blue and green and lighter, just like so. Uh, on the purple, so magentas, we're going to make them more purple, just like that. And then I'm also going to choose blues and make them make them bluer. And same with science, we're going to kind of play around with that and make them more blue. Alright, I think that looks great. The only thing that I don't like the change is her color. As you can see, there is a lot more purple and like yellow and orange coming through. So again, I'm just going to take my eraser and erase that off her hair. Alright, that looks awesome. So this is before and after after the selective color. I love that. We're gonna merge the layers. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my dodge and burn or highlight and shadow. I have them as my actions here. It's a lot easier for me to work this way. I actually have a video on how to create those actions. So if you haven't done that yet, pause this video watch the one on how to make the action save those actions in your computer and then it's going to be a lot easier for you to follow this tutorial so the link will be in the description or floating somewhere on the screen but i'm just going to go ahead and play my highlight action so i'm just going to go ahead and do my regular thing i'm going to highlight the eyes i'm going to highlight the nose the cupid's bow here her lips and i'm also using just a soft rounded brush it always stays at this because um, that's what I use the most. I'm going to highlight the forehead and kind of the bridge of the nose here a little bit more. I'm going to highlight under the eyes. And her chin. I always like to just kind of back it up and see if what I'm doing is looking good or not. I'm going to also go ahead and highlight her arm right here. Now I'm going to go ahead with shadow, so I'm just choosing the background and then playing the shadow action. And I'm just going to go ahead and make her eyelashes a little bit darker. And just under the eye here on the lash line. I like to go under the lower lip, it makes it look bigger. You can go just kind of around the nose, you can make the eyebrows darker. And again, if you messed up, you can just take your eraser tool and erase it, it's very easy. I'm going to also darken her arm here on the side just a little bit. Uh, let's see all right that looks great and I'm gonna go ahead and highlight again I'm gonna try to highlight her face a little bit more here because it's in the shadows and I want to have it a little bit lighter and also I'm gonna highlight the dress a little bit here to make it even shinier. Alright, that looks great. And now I'm going to do one more thing using the highlight uh, action. So I'm going to play my highlight action. I'm going to choose a really big brush and I'm going to go ahead and highlight this whole area around her and then I'm gonna take my eraser tool and just erase all of the highlighting that I've done on the model 
so that it leaves the highlight just around her. You don't have to be super precise here. It's just to make the space behind her a little bit brighter. So this is kind of what it does. I think it brings even more depth of field into the picture. I really love doing it. And now I'm just going to do the same thing with the shadow but just on the very sides of the image to give it that like slight vignette type of look. Alright, just like so. Okay, that looks beautiful. Let me just show you what all of those layers of highlighting and shadowing looked before and after. So this is before and this is after. As you can see, it transforms the picture dramatically. That's why I love doing it. I'm just gonna go ahead and merge these and I'm gonna save my picture. So after I saved my picture, I'm gonna open it in Camera Raw again. I'm just gonna go to File, Open As. I'm gonna find my picture and I just set it to Camera Raw over here in the big list. And I say Open and then it opens it in Camera Raw and what I really love to do is bring the clarity up here. So we're bringing the clarity up and as you can see, it's making the picture a lot more sharp. I really love what this does. I'm also going to bring the vibrance up to make it more vibrant. I'm going to bring the highlights up just like that and I'm going to bring the shadows up just a little bit, contrast up and exposure up. Okay, so this was the before and after. I'm going to open the image in Photoshop and we're going to do just the final touches. So I'm going to make her skin a little bit more yellow. I'm going to do it with selective color. I'm going to take the yellows, make it more yellow. Reds, more yellow. That's perfect. And again, we're just going to take it off of her hair because it has some of that those yellow and oranges that I just don't want to make them more pronounced. So that's the skin. It's the tiniest bit of a difference, but it's there. And the last bit of selective color. I'm going to make those magentas again just more purple. Just like so. Greens. Blues. And also I'm going to choose the blacks here and put them a little bit more to the blue side and it just kind of tints the whole picture in this blue hue even more. So this is before and after the last coloring that we did and again I'm just going to delete it off of her hair because it tinted it a little bit too much in this blue color which I don't really like. Okay, and the very last bit that I'm going to do, because this right here is bothering me just a little bit, we were shooting it at the time where the lilacs were already kind of done blooming, so there's few spots with no flowers on it, and it just doesn't look very good because you can see that brown color peeking through. So I'm going to apply just this uh, empty layer on top, and I'm going to select this lilac color right here. And then with a soft rounded brush, I'm just going to go ahead and apply it over the spots that I don't like. And I just keep changing the colors because as you can see, the flowers have some blue and more purple and more like violet colors. So I'm just kind of changing the colors and trying to get it as similar of a pattern as the rest of the lilacs have. And I'm just switching the brush. All right, so after I'm done with that, I'm just going to bring the opacity a lot lower. 
and I'm just gonna delete it in the spots that I don't like it again so it just looks a little bit more natural alright so that looks great I'm just gonna go ahead and merge the layers alright so the picture is done let me just compare it to the before alright so this was the before and after before and after I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!